I get angry because I'm overwhelmed by my responsibilities. I get angry because I'm terrified I'm not doing this right. I get angry because I feel out of control and I get angry because I feel alone and unsupported. This overwhelm, worry, self-doubt, and loneliness is what needs to be addressed. The anger doesn't need to be shamed. Welcome to January 2022. January was something else, let me tell you. Work was piling up, up, up because, well, there's a lot of tax paperwork for me to work on. There's so much empty apartment to fill up, and I'm in need of a coffee and maybe a full night's sleep, hopefully more than six hours, because currently I get at least two a night and I'm drained. After I grabbed coffee, I went grocery shopping at Costco um, toward Boston area down in Mystic Valley and um, I came home afterward because I just had to grab a few things for the house. Today I'm making veggie udon stir fry. They wanted something noodly and Kate really liked this dish that I make so today I'm making it. I'm also making a pomegranate apple salad for Erica because she really enjoyed that from our New Year feast so I'm making it again for her today. With my sister in town it really helped push me putting more energy into my cooking even if I feel like complete crap. I don't know I've just been so cold and I look really frumpy today because honestly I'm three layer in um, and I'm still cold and you know it's really making me mad because I feel really drained my taste bud hasn't really been there so I'm really using everyone else around me to kind of taste my food for me as I'm going I would feel like the first five day of January was when I kind of felt like I'm coming down with something but because I'm not sneezing I'm not coughing I'm just cold I feel like maybe y'all you know it's like catching the evil wind so I was very like oh just push through it you're just tired so at this point I was trying my hardest to just drink a lot of vitamin C to bypass this cold because I didn't think I had COVID at this very moment because I you know seeing the symptoms of everyone else on TV I just didn't think I had COVID little did I know I was actually this is me going through COVID. Even the broccoli is better than this. Thanks for warning the asparagus. <laughs> but no matter how I feel, I show up and I just get things done. So even though I feel like crap and I'm cold and I'm hot and I'm cold and I'm hot and I'm cold, I feel like maybe this is just another cold I'm coming down with and I'll bypass it. But even when I feel like crap, I'm still working. It's not taken yet. I'm just going, but they're not out of the apartment. No, they're not out. That's why I have a baby to do showing to my, for my girl either. So if they, your girl can wait a bit longer, yes. that will be better. And while everyone is enjoying their food, I am prepping for making dinner tonight. And due to not feeling very well, I really don't want to go out into the cold again to do more showings. So I'm trying to reschedule all my showings for tomorrow. I'm hoping to feel better just because right now I'm sweating profusely and in the same time I'm freezing. Hi Tinka! I can play with you! Hi there! Hi Tinky Winky! Do the little dance! Do the little dance! Do the little dance! Do the little happy feet dance! Do 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 And a little did I know, this is her being over her COVID. That's why she's better. She's been terrible for the last two weeks, but now she's her happy self. She's no longer throwing up at night. And I mean, like, I have to change her sheet twice a night because she throws up. I'm glad you're getting better. <sighs> na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. I love you. Early morning the next day, I tried to schedule all my showing all before lunchtime. Then I came home to make lunch. I feel like I get so busy in my work schedule that I just don't feel the pain when I am going through the notion of working. I am not someone who's afraid of hard work or to burn myself to oblivion just to keep everyone else warm and comfortable. But I'm freaking tired of these responsibilities. 
And honestly, I can't tell what it is. Is it my work? Is it my health? Is it my mental health? Do I need to go on medicine again? I just feel like there's no break. There's no break in my daily life. There's no break in my mental health. There's no rest. Everything I do just bleeds into the next day, the next evening. And then at night, I can't sleep. I can barely sleep. It's filled with so much nightmare and due to the stress of the daily life. It's heartbreaking for waiting for another day to be better. But every day I just feel so worn down. I feel too tired to keep fighting someday, keep trying, keep awake. And honestly, there's no amount of self-care that I can do to fix it. No bubble bath, no chocolate. There's no fixing for a mother with a broken spirit who feels like she's failing. And there's so much I can't tell you about my internal struggle. Is this the postpartum? Is this just my health failing so I'm unable to keep my mental health afloat? So every day, even if I feel like crap, I just keep going. I kind of just pause in my brain. I try to cancel all my feelings out. And somewhere inside, I think the fire that keep me going, the me that I love and enjoy and want to just embrace life, I think she died. So in this video, I want to remind all the new mother that you are not alone. That there are so many other women that you look up to that go through the same thing even though they don't talk about it. You are not alone. And how you feel is real. You're not crazy. You're not overwhelmed. You're not overreacting. Don't let anyone belittle how you feel. You need to be able to speak up with how you feel because I wish I had. I wish I did. Because whatever I felt in January that I bubbled up exploded in February. And I wish I didn't struggle all that by myself. Cleaning your house without the kids is not a break. Showering is not a break. Grocery shopping alone is not a break. It's chore and basic hygiene, but mother are supposed to be grateful to do this thing that literally everyone else does. And at some point, we just break. I lost myself in motherhood. All I have is responsibility. I don't even remember what I enjoy anymore. And honestly, I don't want that for you. I don't want that for any of you, not even the people that I dislike. Because honestly, I don't want you to just be breathing and surviving. You should enjoy your life. In January, I lost that. I let responsibility took over. I let my mental health go. And I just didn't know why I just felt so depressed. I blamed it on my postpartum, but really it was me and my choices to not put me first at all. I wasn't even on the list. I didn't matter to me. And to make things worse, the feeling of being alone started creeping in because of my responsibility and my overbearing work schedule. I skipped out on all the date and my husband stopped trying and then I just felt like the relationship kind of just fell apart, you know? He slept on his side, I slept on my side, I was responsible for all the children. He just felt so far away from me and I took it as maybe he's tired from work because he has his own workload, but I never share with him my struggle and when he told me his struggle is not that I'm not empathetic, it's just, it seems so minuscule next to mine, you know? And I don't complain about it, but I allow him to punch me with his emotional baggage. And I just took it because I just didn't want another fight. I didn't have enough strength in me to fight with him, to tell him how I feel because I had no time. I was honestly physically unwell. I actually contracted COVID and I didn't know about it, you know? But I just couldn't breathe. I felt crappy, I felt terrible, I felt cold, I felt like I had no strength, all my joints hurt. But when you're someone who's so hardworking, you kind of push it off as, oh, I'm just sore. You know, you, you, you are your best doctor, you need to just take care of yourself. And I forgot about myself. I kept on pouring and pouring until there's nothing left in my cup. And when I realized there was nothing left to pour, to give to other people, I felt like a failure. Every day, it was just one chore to the next, one responsibility to the next, one client to the next, one paperwork to the next. It was overwhelming, it was overbearing. There was just, everything was down to the second. 
you know? It was just piling up so much. It was down to the second that I couldn't even have time to think, to mourn, to clarify where my heart was, where my responsibility was. My, It, it was just get it done. Just get it done. You'll feel better when it's done. And I don't want you to live like that. Everyone's around me is always looking for advice. They're always asking for help. But they don't ever realize why I give such good advice. Why am I sympathetic? Why am I so understanding? Why am I so wise? How is that I'm able to see right through them? To know exactly what it is that they try to lie to themselves for? How I can just pinpoint exactly what is wrong and why they feel the way they feel? It's because I've gone through everything that anybody has ever asked me for advice for. And unlike them, there was never anyone there for me. I figured it out myself. I went through the whole notion, sadness, struggle by myself. And it took all that pain to create the Shantae Mac that you know that inspire you to be a better human being, to want more out of life. If I can make it, so can you, sweetie. And after I was done with all my lease signing, that carried over a little later, it was time to feed the girls. Next spoon, Kara. Go on, next spoon. And this usually should take 35 to 40 minutes. Next. Yes, you can drink orange juice. Go on. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's been so overwhelming, but I love my children. However, I've been hating parenting. After dinner, it was showering all three girls, change them, and prep them for bed. Baby, 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 make for Mm-hmm. Tara, what are you doing? I cleaned out the window. Oh, you look at the window, okay. Oh. Doctor cut me with a knife, and then now baby come out. And uh, uh, your, your, your stomach hurt. It, a it, it lot. used to, not anymore. And was under with your boom? Yes, under my tummy is my boom. <laughs> and you had the bandit on her? Yeah. It's boom it's hurt. hurt a lot. Nope, boom doesn't a lot. hurt. Just all my, only my tummy hurt because baby was in my tummy. And this cook hurt. Is he kick? Yeah. One day. Yeah. Come on. Daddy did it. Daddy did what? Is daddy kick it. No, Daddy didn't kick it. Em vẫn đang tập nói đó 
She want to talk to both of you. Nói chuyện đàng hoàng em thôi mà khi khi Kara. My sister is visiting me today. Come up. This is the 7th of January and Kate wanted me to paint her nails. So here I am painting her nails because my princess get whatever she wants. All right, paint those here that are dry and I'm going to put a top coat on here. Where is dry? Uh-huh. the hand. See, if you sit still, then it's perfect every time. Yeah, up like that and then blow. Don't get too close. Is, 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 I won't go in the eye. No, you're going to uh, mess it up. So last night was the first time that I experienced the unable to breathe symptoms. So I just couldn't breathe well and I just felt like my sinus keep on clogged up to where like there was just no sleeping and the whole time I was burning up to where my husband said babe you're feverish but then I'm freezing cold to where I'm like give me more coat because I was literally in four layer and under two coat and was still really cold and so I told my husband that I may have sepsis again because that's what I'm experiencing right now is what I was going through the first year when we got married so he got worried so he got me coffee today got me some flowers I know it sounds weird but yeah he came home and got me coffee he's like why don't you stay in and take the day off and that's what I decide on doing it takes a lot of beating for me to take off work but because I'm a mom because I still have a family to care of of course I'm still pushing through and trying to cook as much as I can because the show must go on, you know? Everyone's got to eat. So even if I don't feel well, even if I'm freezing, even if this water feel like deathly ice, I'm still doing it because I'm the main cook and Lily is busy working upstairs and... At this point, after cooking, I was overly sore. I was just, I had no strength left to my body. Like my joints just burns, it hurt like I have arthritis. And I decided I was just gonna go upstairs and cuddle Kaylee. I played with Kaylee a little bit, then my sister took Kaylee downstairs and watched her. And I tried to get a, a little shut eye, but then I felt super terrible, so I ended up calling my husband. Saturday morning came soon enough and I wanted to see if I was going to get better. If I don't, then I'm thinking about, you know, checking at the hospital if I feel like I can brave it through. But this has been two really bad nights sleep already, so we'll see. But yeah, we're gonna play it by ears. If anything, I still have to cook lunch and dinner for the girls. Just in case I do check myself in, the girls can feed themselves at home. My symptoms, honestly, is being suppressed by the DayQuil and um, as long as the DayQuil is working, even for just a few hours, I'm up and about and working. Dear mom who needs to be reminded that she matters, this is your reminder. Now go back to all that you're doing. You're cleaning, working, driving, nose wiping, cooking, clothes folding, everyday thing and hold your head high. Motherhood matters. More than having a perfect house, perfect body, the perfect planning schedule, the perfect kids, the perfect anything. You are a game changer, a life changer. You are their mother and this is why you matter.
And even on the days you feel like you are failing, look around. I promise you, to your kids, they still think you are the best mom in the whole universe. Let me. Huh? Mm. That's egg. I'm gonna eat it. Good for you. Mm, yummy. Uh huh. Happy. Are you okay? No, that's No, so you don't get in your hand. After feeding the girls their lunch, my symptoms acted up and I decided to check myself in. And honestly, the whole place was booked with people. So many people. I ended up waiting for three hours before I was seen and then two hours while I was in the room with no one helping me. And by the time I got my result back, they said I was negative and sent me home. And the next day I got an email. It said I was positive and their result was false. So yeah. So yesterday when I was at the hospital, um, I had a bit of cooking, so I ordered one food from the rush my favorite restaurant, which was Slapping Monks. I don't want to badmouth them, but they definitely went downhill. Their uh, cooking was extremely salty. Like, extremely salty, which I'm not happy with. And uh, since I don't want to throw it away, However, the weird part is, after I left the hospital, I guess that was the peak of my COVID to where it was really killing me. And then after I came home, I just felt so much more energy, you know? Now that you know what's wrong with me and how to deal with it. And after my family member found out that I have COVID, um, everyone started shipping in a lot more with the cleaning the house and just being more mindful um, and appreciative because everyone went through COVID and they had me taking care of them and even when I was going through COVID I was so alone at it and they all felt super guilty. And you're fine. Yeah. And since I'm the main cook in the house and I still cook for my kids, a lot of my cooking actually improved because COVID did take away my taste, but it enhanced my ability to smell. I think that's the weirdest thing about me. One one thing is taken away, another enhanced. So a lot of the time when I cook, I can really smell if it's how it's supposed to smell or taste. And being able to practice for a good three week, um, I'm able to just kind of aim for a lot of my cooking now. Like I would just know how it's going to turn out. Pre-marinated, never before has I been able to do that. Maybe my cooking ability has improved, but my family member is telling me that my cooking just went from 50 to 9,000. Like I can just throw something in, I'm like, that's what it need. I'm like, how do you know? I'm like, I can smell it. Like my health, my smelling ability have enhanced to the point where I think I'm pregnant, but I can't be. And I've also been updating a lot on Instagram, just showing people my work and my family's compliment has really boosted my want into helping others get better with their cooking or stepping up their cooking game so yeah definitely a lot more actual personal cooking video will start coming out starting october i spent the last part of january just focusing on myself on mental health i did a lot of meditation i took more time to myself kind of just learning to take a step back and let the work get done when it's done and I find a lot of relaxation time when I'm cleaning which is crazy because when you take cleaning as a chore it's so unenjoyable but when you take it as a way for you to relax then it really does become really really enjoyable and just relaxing and calming so when I clean it's usually when I declutter my head I actually think about what I should do first versus carrying the whole load by itself and toward the end of the video I kind of want to help you figure out how to understand and work through your problem and it's quite simple if I were to ask you to move a bed upstairs by yourself you would probably feel like oh how can I do that it's so heavy I'm only one person I can't 
but if you think of it as I can use a screwdriver or a power drill to break the part the bed and move it up a piece at a time then you did carry the bed upstairs by yourself put it together by yourself and the bed is still upstairs and you did not stress yourself with the whole notion of oh I have to move the full bed how am I gonna lift this huge bed so break your work down how can you minimize your problem into something small and enjoyable and easy for you to do at your own strength in your own time because the work will be done whether it's one day two days or three days on January 9th my husband decided to surprise me with a treat since the girls are gonna be visiting grandma and grandpa he's like let's spend some time together and get a couple massage hopefully it'll help you feel better from all your soreness so here we are in Brookline we're trying a new place and I feel like this is a good place to end part one of this January series so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being a subscriber if you enjoyed this video don't forget thumbs up share it with your friend and leave a comment down below and check out next week video as well as these other video if you haven't yet